everybody. I'm about to get started on a 60 minute session for a client and we're gonna be exploring Morgellons disease. I'm gonna read the client goals here, get tuned in. I cannot wait to see what we discover in the session. This is the first time I've ever had an opportunity to take a look at this on the energy side of things. So I want to thank you, the client, so much for the opportunity to work with you and then for your openness to share. This could really touch a lot of people's lives. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here and then get started. Okay. All right. Hi, Abby. In the last year, I've had three sessions with you dealing with past lives, soul energy clearing for fibromyalgia, and checking the energy of my house. These were all fantastic and very helpful sessions, and now I find I need to go deeper to continue clearing out more physical symptoms, which cause a lot of pain and seriously drain my energy. I've noticed in the last couple of years that I've broken out in blisters and slow healing sores on both lower legs from mid-calf downward. The skin here has thickened and gotten leathery. About six months ago, thready things started coming out of the sores along with other embryonic type material. I suspect Morgellons disease and have used a zapper and hydrogen peroxide soaks to treat this. After soaking, I see lots of faces in the water they're pretty ugly. I suspect an alien or archon involvement. Some people think Morgellons is a transhumanist agenda whose ultimate purpose is to create human alien mutations or robots. I don't know what to believe, but I know it is harming me and preventing me from moving forward due to excessive fatigue and pain. I don't have the energy to take care of my 90-year-old dad and have had to hire an aide to help with him. My doctor says it's very bizarre and she doesn't know how to help me. Most doctors don't know anything about Morgellons and call it delusional. Abby, can you clear this stuff out along with whatever entities are tied in with it? Where does this originate? I know I'm not the only one dealing with this condition, so I will be glad to have this session available on YouTube. <sighs> okay, thank you so much for all the details. I'm just getting in the zone here and just absorbing your experience. Man, just just tapping into this, I just feel like there's a... Even for me to talk right now, I just feel like there's a lot of weird resistance. Like, life should feel free-flowing even if there's uh, moments where we need to stop and take some time to reflect it feels like constant jar like constant resistance it that even for me to talk about it it's like eh, gotta get it out of my mouth <laughs> resistance it feels like energetic resistance but let me just relax here and get tuned in because i have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of different things looking at it from a lot of different perspectives in order to unravel and understand it more and i absolutely will look for entities usually when you're in a tough spot when your life is feeling um muddied up like this it can attract negativity negative beings um because you're feeling down right so it can have an influence on that. So I will definitely look at everything. So I'm going to relax here. Okay, why is it so jarring on my throat? I'm just going to relax your energy field. It's like a weird form of stress. And it is kind of strange because... I'm in your energy field. I'm only at the surface right now. I'm just touching this layer and it's odd like squeezing um, cheese out of a hole and it's it's all over you. I know this is just focused on your, your legs, but I'm literally, it's like a orb around you and it's like little holes, like um, just little holes with like bits of cheese coming out of it. That's what it looks like. And I'm telling your energy field to relax. Man, there's so many projected realities here. It's off the charts, by the way. It's way off the charts. And stress is a major part of this, for sure. 
man, you, you've got a mental body imbalance as well. So they're saying it's a delusional thing. You know what? Delusional things still are an experience of reality. So I don't like that word. We need to explore why is this real though? Why, what is creating this reality? Because it is real. To people who are going through this, this is real. So we need to actually look at what, where that influence is coming from because it is real. It is a reality. It's not a delusion. I can see there's a lot of, um, your mental body is doing something strange. <laughs> um, and it's like projecting realities um, that then become real, okay? So I got to figure out where, why is your mind um, doing this? How, like this, I'm still working at the beginning trying to make sense of this. So stress, your mind's out of balance big time. And I'm just calming you down here. This is still just the beginning. Okay, it's really grossing me out. <sighs> Why is the throat so choked up? I'm still touching your... It's kind of like touching your energy field. This is just the beginning layers. But this odd cheese stuff, it's like it's getting on the palms of my hands and it's got a very gross feeling to it. But it's just reflective of what you're going through, how you feel about it. It's You feel gross about it. And I feel inspired to say if anyone is watching this who's going through Morgellons disease, you can receive healing from this session as well. Just be open to receiving, okay? We're all connected to each other. Yeah, it's very gross. My, my palms, it's like I can't get it off my skin. I'm still calming down the mind, calming down your energy field. Doesn't bother me to touch the weird cheese. It's no big deal. It's just me learning about how you feel about it. And it feels gross. It's still calming down your mind, calming down your energy field. There's something um, new coming forward. It's a very strange image. It looks like hair. Like armpit hair, okay? It's what it reminds me of. And sweaty armpit hair. And I keep, it's like somebody with gross sweaty armpit hair rubbing armpit hair all over me. That's sweaty armpit hair. That's what keeps coming. They're like little black little, like, uh, they're a bit coarse feeling. Again, the feeling is gross. Feels gross. Back of the mind is got a lot going on. This is definitely a condition that, that needs to be taken seriously. I do feel like it is taken seriously. It's just confusing. That's what it's just it's just it's just a strange condition to have. It is somehow feels like stress related. Somehow the way that you process stress or have processed stress, even with the fibromyalgia, that seems to be a stress related and strange. It's like, how does that happen? I'm still calming down your energy field. It's starting to help my throat feel more fluid. Okay. That resistance is starting to relax more. There, this is uh, the ugly faces is, is starting to, I'm starting to notice what you're talking about here with that. As of right now, it's a reflection of how you feel inside about yourself. There's so much more going on here. This is still sounds very basic, but there's still so much going on. I'm just having to relax everything down in order to get into more of the different roots of where is this coming from? Why? I'm just continuing to heal it by starting with relaxation. Ugh, again, ugh, it's like um, my hands are feel really gross. And I'm touching the aura. It's not as cheesy as it was. <laughs> Starting to relax. I'm trying to ascend more of the... There's some energy buildup. Again, the mind was very strangely... I don't... 
I don't know how to describe that out of balance feeling. Um, but there's too much pent up energy here. So I'm sending it down. And interestingly enough, I'm sending this energy that you no longer serves your purpose down through your legs and out your feet. Is it possible that some of these energies aren't flowing through your legs properly out your feet? They're getting um, congested there. Is that po possibility? But this is too much pent up energy around the head. So I'm just sending it down the legs out the feet. <sighs> So what is jarring up the flow of your energy? That's feeling a lot better already, by the way. I'm going to just touch your legs now. Just literally touch your legs. Hmm. So this condition is, is difficult enough that a big portion of your soul is not, you're not in your body fully. It's just too traumatizing. It's just too difficult of an experience. So when I touch your legs, I'm listening for your, your soul's energy um, and you're out of your body. So I'm, I'm going to pull you all the way in. I'm going to pull you all the way into your feet. Okay. Man, it feels awful. <laughs> feels like I really don't want to be in this. It's like you're knee deep in a really gross situation. And you do not want to be knee deep in a gross situation. But we have to embrace every situation in order to understand it and to um, bring balance to it. Because when we resist these uncomfortable situations, it takes a very long time to heal it. It may not heal. We literally have to be fully immersed in the experience no matter how it feels. That's always the goal. Every time energy balance... It's so powerful when the soul is fully immersed in the experience. Um, the energy is out of balance when the soul is out of the body and resisting the experience. So I'm just waving my hands here because I'm just continuing to coax your soul back down. It's okay. It's safe. It's going to be fine. I know it's gross. I know it's so weird. It's a weird situation. We're calming down all the energies. It's going to get more peaceful in here. And there's a new image. It looks like um, tiny little worms. You know, I um, my kids caught some tadpoles. We have a pond nearby. So I've been collecting pond water over the last weeks and putting it in fresh water for the tadpoles. And there's so many gross little bugs in there. And they these little white dots turn into little worms, like clear colored worms. And it's like, it's a pretty gross thing. <laughs> I try to appreciate nature, right? But it does kind of gross me out sometimes. Anyway, I've seen these little white worms. Um, it looks like a, why, I don't know. It's some kind of like pinkish color fluid. So that's the new, the new image, okay? I'm just seeing lots of little white worms and like a pink colored fluid. <sighs> okay. So like, again, like my palms feel like, <laughs> violated <laughs> I feel violated in my palms <laughs> it's just me continuing to learn about your energy so you you feel energetically violated and I can tell like it's a very it's like really it's like I, this is wrong this is straight up wrong stuff going on here I'm still bringing your soul down into your feet Still calming your energy field down. Your throat is starting. It's the the resistance, that jarring is totally subsiding. Energy from head is still coming on down through the legs. It's, it's the flow is starting to correct itself. I'm going to bring more of your mental body energy into your actual mind space. It's like slightly stretched out or it's become kind of split, interdimensionally split is what it looks like. So we're going to bring that together and then have it in oneness and harmony. I need to, I, I'm just saying the word fibromyalgia in here. It's almost like, like this is, um, a like a, this is kind of an amplification of that. I'm just saying the word fibromyalgia in here and I just want to see how your energy field reacts to that. Oh. The word's just starting to disappear. 
Things are starting to get quieter. It does feel like there are some imbalanced entity energies in here. I don't know if it's related to Morgellons or what you're going through or if you attracted them because of how you've been feeling. The worms aren't wiggling as much. Have you ever, um, what is this pink liquid reminding me of? Like getting a, a really bad, like, um, skinning your knee. It's, it's like, it can bleed, but there's a strange other colored liquid, a juice or something that's not blood. Um, and it helps to create a, the scab. Um... This liquid kind of reminds me of a different, um, it's other than the blood. So much stress here. I'm going to literally, how, how do I want to explain this? So you can exist in stress which right now you're currently, I am feeling out your energy field and it's still stressful. It's still very stressful in here. So I'm literally going to separate you from stress because the stress just isn't transmuting. It's simply not right now. So I'm going to give you a break from stress by pulling the two of you apart. <laughs> like stress is its own entity. And then you are your own entity without stress. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I want to see what happens. It's like, well, why wouldn't you do that in the first place? Because I wasn't called to do that. I'm called to do that right now. <sighs> There's something about reconciling the stress versus um, separating you from it, isn't actually processing it, isn't facing it. It's um, kind of like running away from it, but you need a break because the only way you're going to understand yourself without the stress is to exist without it in the energy space so you can remember what it's like to exist without it and then you can trans learn how to transmute stress all by yourself because in the end you still have to transmute the stress it's your stress you have to learn how to let it go you have to learn how to to transform it so we're separating you this is a nightmare as well because it's almost like the stress gives you some kind of odd meaning in life. When I, d when I separate you from stress, it's like an empty space with you in it. And it's actually creating a nightmare. Because all the gaps of your life have been filled in with stress. So your life is whole. I know it sounds strange, but that's literally what it looks like on the energy side of things. I'm helping you to learn how to feel whole without stress. So interesting. You're kind of, um, it's almost like you look like you're stitched into a wall, basically and in a very small room where you can't leave it you can't go anywhere if you had a, a tea or coffee or water or something you wouldn't be able to actually grasp it because you're stitched to the wall you could look at it though you could see the things in this small room but you won't ever have access to it and you'll never be able to leave the small room that's what remains when i remove stress I will say you're quickly um, liking this more. And you being stitched to the wall is starting to disappear. And you're starting to gain more um, power over your circumstances. And the things that you want are no longer out of reach. You're starting to feel as though you have control or power in your own life. And you can access the things that you want. But you have this echoing fear and literally it would be like post-traumatic stress. 
um, that fear, that stress will come back. You, you have a, you're starting to acclimate. It's actually kind of nice without stress. Wow. Now I can have access to the things that I want. Wow. Now I can move around. Wow. I'm free. Oh my God. This is what freedom feels like. Oh, I don't want stress to come back. Please stress. Don't come back. Don't ever come back. So now there's a bit of an energetic anxiety. Cause you've been, this has been a long time. That's how you build up this, um, it's like habits you learn even from your pain and create pain um, it's like habits. So this is extremely good progress, extremely good stress is not coming in and I and I just look you in the eye and I say stress will not be entering in here I'm here we've removed stress you're going I'm putting you into a, a just a time room where however long you would like to be it's like a safety space where stress can't ever get in for you to have a place where you can heal until stress doesn't bother you anymore. Even the word doesn't bother you. And nothing really is eating you alive. It's literally like stress. It's somehow a weird way that your body is coping or processing stress. It's like it literally is eating you alive. There's more to it. There still feels like a lot more to it. Because your heart's getting really dense, third eye's dense. There's still something more going on here, but one thing at a time, okay? Just allowing you to have a safety space. And that way your belief system says, stress cannot reach me. Stress cannot have access to me. When your belief system says there's no stress that can ever reach me, now stress cannot re reach you. Stress itself is like an entity. So how do you remove entities? You change your belief systems. It gives you a lot of power. I'm safe from stress. That is what you need right now. I do feel like we're going to have to shift that eventually, but this is what you need right now to bring this into balance. Okay, I have to do something next. It's just kind of shifting energy here, so I don't know what it is yet. But I do feel very tired in my face, tired in my third eye. I feel very drained. My heart feels really tight. I don't feel necessarily angry. All right. The next space I'm supposed to look at is your sacral chakra. It's about how you are enjoying life, how you are enjoying the pleasures of life, life as a pleasurable experience. So as you can see with all this stress, it's creating so much damage. Life isn't very pleasurable, is it? So this can have a major effect on your sacral chakra. It's like... Um, rotten it's like um it's it looks like wet leaves wet leaves that have been just sort of left to just i guess go back to the earth in time but they're kind of i don't know they're not necessarily rotten but they're just they're definitely deteriorating but they're all piled in here It's really stuffed up in here. It feels way too small. It feels like your sacral chakra is way too small. Like I walk in and that's as far as I could ever go. Your sacral chakra is an infinite universe. <laughs> so I should be able to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. But it's like, no, you get to go five feet in. That's as far as you get to go. In the infinite universe of your sacral chakra. So we got to work on this. Still, um, it's still not reconciled yet with your legs fully. Still working on bringing all these energies into balance. 
which then will bring your legs into balance. All right, there's more to the ugly faces, okay? Some of them are fears. Again, really certain something's really bothering my throat here. Still in your sacral chakra. It's just really pent up energy. It's not going any further with the faces. I just have to continue to work through this right now. It's almost like it's all this build up. It's like it's building up more and more and more, but really it's just pulling the build up towards me so it can just be released. Because there's just so much build up in here. You're going to have to explore your worth and value. Okay. Finally, some anger. feel like there should be a lot more anger in here. Okay. Just calming that down. Whew, that was pretty exhausting. That's a sacral chakra, throat, and third eye mind, okay? What is that anger? Where? What is it from? Don't exactly know. Has to do with your condition. Has to do with self-worth. It's something about celebrating life. Life is to be a celebration, but this is suffocating your ability to ce celebrate. So celebration is like sacral chakra energy. Suffocation is like throat energy. You know, it, there's something about self-worth here. The anger is not being able to celebrate, to really express you know, the joys of living. Still really jammed up in here, but it, it's wanting to open up more. It is starting to feel like a more expanded space. There's something like, like a secret. And it has to do with your worth and value. And it's hidden and it's hushed up in your sacral chakra. Starting to feel your solar plexus, your emotional gut starting to circulate now. Have more of a um, interaction with this. I'm still doing a lot of different things, okay? I never stopped relaxing your energy field. I never stopped relaxing your mind. I never stopped supporting the part of you that is in the stress-free zone. Continuing to nurture your sacral chakra, continuing to send love into your legs, continuing to allow this energy from the mind to continue to flow down, to feel safe releasing itself, doesn't need to stay in the body. It needs to release. You need to let go of the stress. Something weird about the backside of your sacral chakra. It's like a weird plug. That just kind of unplugged itself and popped out the backside. So it's it's like creating some breathability in here, some room to breathe. It's still very um, we're not there yet. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let this I'm just gonna continue to encourage um, circulation um, fresh air breathability um, self-love I'm seeing you here and then I'm seeing you here and then you hugging yourself and saying thank you for being me. I love you for all that you are. I wanted to go take a look at your crown chakra. I also want to see how your soul's doing just coming in to your feet, okay? If it's ready for that yet or not. Check on this soul, your soul first, okay? That's still going to happen in your sacral chakra. <sighs> The relaxation is helping your soul to feel more comfortable being in your body. And it's not that your soul is necessarily disturbed or like too grossed out by your condition. It's just, it's really more the stress that is electrocuting. It's like, it's really painful for the soul. It's more of the stress than anything. Your soul is totally fine with the, the sores. And it's like that aspect of this isn't hard on your soul so much as this processing all of the stress and it is painful okay so soul's still doing that let me check on your crown here i just want to see where your higher mind is at hmm there's some we there's a weird face here it's a, it's so, it's kind of alien looking, okay? It's got some um, black slits that are, it, I mean, it's kind of Asian looking eyes, but the eyes are large, but it has very, like, long, um, it's like it can't open it, its eyes larger than the slits. Uh, it also has a bit of a flat face, and its nose is pretty flat. It's got a, it's like a light, it's got a greenish colored skin, but it's a bit, um, the complexion has some like cream color to it as well. And it's kind of shaded in and places it seems to be, it's not like green green. I'm asking this being, why are you in the crown chakra here? What do you know about this Morgellons? This being also has some kind of connection with your sacral chakra, too. Trying to change them into other images like uh, a snake, a bird, um, a tree, you know, but he's really prominently stays the same. <sighs> I'm trying to figure out, is this um, a real entity? He's not really expressing a lot in the way of energy. He's just an image right now. So if he changes shapes, that, that'll tell me something about him. When he doesn't change shapes, it's more like, this is my specific form. This is my form kind of thing. Yeah, he doesn't, he's, he can't, I'm just, I'm really going to hold the image of a tree. I don't, I feel like he's going to be a tree from now on. I just really, I'm transforming him into a tree and a sturdy tree that's very grounded. I just, I'm transforming him into that. So I want to see what he does. He really, he really is angry about this. He does not like that. All right. I got to let the tree go because it's starting to hurt me the way that it's making him feel. So I'm going to let that go. I'm going to touch his heart. He really just um, isn't communicating. He just, uh, his frequency just doesn't share energy. He just very much just this picture. And so when I touch his heart, it's like not giving me a lot of information. But I am starting to see that, that he is changing into a bunch of, like, maggots. Big, fat, white worms. In your, in your crown chakra. I 
I still see him standing here. And now I see a pile of big fat white worms. Like they're huge. They're like babies. Like the size of human babies. All wrapped up. Um, swaddled. Like all the way around there. Just big white worms. I tell him you don't belong here. And I am going to have to put you in a box. I prefer if we could talk about this so you could just make a choice here because you don't belong here, so you're going to have to go. <sighs> I'm just, I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm just putting him in a box. I'm putting all the worms in a box. I'm putting him in a box. Coating it in gold energy. I'm going to see how you how well you can let go of things. I'm letting this go. I'm removing this from your energy field right now. There's nothing else you need to know about this. If there was more you needed to know about this, I'd be able to access more information. What's more important is learning how well you can let go of something you can't understand. This is also going to teach you how to let go of stress too. This makes me very, very emotional, by the way. Like, really, really, really upset. Like, I feel like I'm being wronged in ways that I can't, my mind can't even comprehend it. It makes me so mad. And why is this happening to me? I tell you, if there's one thing that I've learned in my role you'll either find out the answer or some version of an answer or you won't find out anything you want there's so many things i'd like to understand better but i'm not allowed to access that information at this time so i literally have to just let it go and i know that i will access the information in time if i'm meant to so that's how you have control over that stuff you definitely have psychic sensitivity because even for you to see those faces in the water, it's you seeing into your own energy field. It's you seeing into yourself and now trying to understand what is the message? What is this saying to you, you know? Still feel like we're just skimming the surface. We're making amazing progress, but there's still more to look at in here. Your crown still needs support. It feels like it's it's not active. Like your crown should be way more active than this. It's like it's shut down. And it's exhausting me to be in here. Um, I'm sending signals, just circulation. It's time to wake up now. It's time to wake up now. You know, sending light in and s soft energies, happy energies, um, sweet, innocent, childlike energies. Encouraging it to wake up because it's like very inactive. I mean, this is your higher mind. This is your higher mind is inactive. Hmm. You have a lot of jammed up chakras from this. A lot of them. Because, I mean, this is what we're doing. We're opening up your chakras. We're helping you to have access to breathability. So you feeling tired, your chakras being this jammed would exhaust anybody. Because you're having to work through really small energy spaces. <laughs> like, like, like your breathability should be really expansive, right? Your energetic breathability, the flow of your energy field. Now, when that gets smaller, like you're breathing through a tube, through all of your chakras, um, it's going to physically exhaust you as well. It's, it's in the energy space, but it has an effect on the physical body too. It's going to drain you. It's also going to make it so your energy is not flowing. It should just flow and circulate like a washer in the dryer, you know. It should just circulate like that. So you're getting jams in places. 
also this energy stress it's so we're continuing to relax that out which is feeling incredibly better than it was we're bringing your mind back together again like third eye mind and a crown chakra getting it activated sacral chakra self-worth celebration of life celebration of self love of life love of self expression of self Your crown is extremely exhausted. I'm trying to figure out what to do here because I can't just wake up something that is so exhausted. To wake it up is exerting it. So, hmm. Oh, hmm. What can I do? I know what to do. So your heart is like your soul space, okay? Your source energy space. All your chakras are connected to source, but there's something about the heart. Like when you feel the love inside your heart, everything moves. Your eyes are bawling out. You're, you're emotional. You're freaking on your knees. So gratitude of life. Like sacral chakras freaking out. You feel so rooted into this earth. You feel peaceful with your life. Like your mind is just expressive, you know? So when you feel the love inside your heart, like when it's really meaningful, like that is true. That is tuned into all the energy of like God, you know, it's like source energy. So I'm going to take your crown and bring that consciousness, crown consciousness into your heart, okay? Heart space to kind of charge the battery to help it feel connected to source again. It's like a broken light bulb. And I don't like, it's not necessarily broken so much as it is completely fatigued. So, this is uh, it's going to take some, we're going to need all the chakras involved here. So, I'm taking a part of your third eye, heart, part of your throat into your heart, part of your solar plexus into your heart, part of your sacral chakra into your heart, part of your root into your heart. Because all the chakras are going to have to support each other and your crown needs a lot. It needs all hands on deck. And all your chakras are going through their own challenges as well. So now they can be kind of in a community center in the love of all within your heart. Um, so they can all start to recharge. They can all start to work together. They all start to listen to each other's needs and be there to support each other. That, that has to do its own thing. So I'm going to let that do its own thing over there. Everything is still happening. There's the next thing. I want to get as much done as I can for you in the session. So they're hanging out. That's actually feeling really good very quickly. But I need to look at what is these little worms, all right? Are they real? Are they part of, are they like echoes of stress that just kind of create themselves? Are they actually etheric worms? Like, are they real? So I need to look at them. Is a strange fluid around your legs and lots of these little white worms in there? And it could be, let's just say, this is an idea. Let's say stress has built up so bad, it's jacked up your chakras. It's it fatigued your crown, right? Like we're seeing here. Um, it's taking everything to the extremes. It's pushing your soul out of your body. It's simply too much. Now your body is basically eating itself alive as the only way to cope with this is basically destroying itself. That's really extreme stuff we're, we're talking about here. Now, when that process happens, it's, it's your reality. It is your reality. Now, as your reality, it becomes fabricated in the energy world. So now you created the worms and that fluid. But I don't know for sure. This is simply an idea. I'm trying to make sense of how does this happen? What happened in your energy field? What can we do to totally therapeutically just bring you back into balance, right? So that's an idea that comes to me. The spirit realm isn't saying yes or no to that. I'm going to just look at your legs right now. Uh, yeah, so it's like, oh man, it's again this... <sighs> emotional 
it's like uh, make it go away make it stop <sighs> um, it's very overwhelming so I'm just helping you to process these feelings and I'm just touching it's like a fluid sacs around your legs okay it just goes all the way around your legs and your feet even are just basically in like really big socks full of fluid so I'm just touching one It wants to be real. It wants to be real. I'm putting my fingers into it and I'm actually putting my fingers into your very legs. Like into your skin and muscles and bones and everything. Into your nerves. It's kind of rotted flesh inside of here is what it's like. On the energy side of things. Which now is manifesting scabs and rotted flesh in the physical side of things it's like a weird energy flesh eating disease <laughs> that's literally what it looks like so your energy flesh it's like a weird energy flesh eating disease I'm still strengthening your so you have physical muscles, you have etheric muscles, you have many layers of energetic versions of yourself that then really have a major impact in your physical balance. So I am, love it will heal everything, love will bring everything into balance. Some of it though is a little bit of work on your part to adjust to a new routine, looking at stress therapy for instance, is a big one. Um, this is helping. I'm just putting um, love into literally your very legs. Your etheric legs. Not worrying about the weird sack and the strange little worms. It's actually not as important as what's going on inside the energy fibers of your muscles and your legs. All right, uh, I'm going to keep myself, a part of myself here, continuing to do this. All right, so still relaxing you. I'm still, everything is still processing. Everything is still happening, okay? I'm just putting another version of me in this place just to continue that process, continue that process here. I want to go check on your crown chakra and your other chakras. Yeah, your legs are, it, I can, it's, it is making a big difference. Because even as I come up here to your heart, I, I feel like my own legs are feeling different. In a, but in a good way. More natural way. Still, still uh, work to do, but you know, the healing process, it doesn't just happen. It take, it has to be mended, you know. Even in the energy world, things have to mend. Uh, my guides are talking about explaining that. So in the energy world, infinite time. So how long does it take anything to mend in a space of infinite time? It should be instantaneous. But there's other aspects of you that are tuned in to what is mending right now. They have to come to peace with it. They have to learn from it. So as all the other parts of you work through the, this mending, then it, it just continues to mend until it's completed its cycle at this level, this vibrational level. So that's how long it will take to mend. <laughs> so that's, that's what they're showing me. Okay. Your crown is starting to turn into a female energy. And she feels, uh, she's very, very um, kind of um, withdrawn, holds, she has sadness in her eyes, but she just, She's got a po poise about her that she's kind of holds herself together, but there's a sadness and she's kind of removed. <sighs> there's pink and white colors that she expresses. 
I ask her if she's okay. I'm not going to force her to get back to work. I mean, she needs time to repair. She knows the importance of her role. I ask her what has happened. How did this happen? She's really healing a lot from your heart energy. Because I even I can feel her starting to heal inside her own heart. And it's this is so interesting here. Just bear with me. Because as I'm looking at her, I'm seeing her heart start to activate. Now I'm seeing her third eye start to activate. Now her throat. I'm starting to see her own inner chakra energies are starting to activate because she's receiving the information from the other chakras that are in the heart. So they're helping to activate all of her chakras, okay? So the reality is, think it's like the infinite mirror. Like I'm looking at myself in the mirror who's looking at myself in the mirror who's looking at myself in the mirror. So take out the consciousness of your, of your crown chakra and it will have chakras too. And then those chakras will also have chakras. And those chakras will, it's like so crazy. <laughs> the universe is. All right. But she's actually repairing quite quickly because the frequency of all your other chakras are repairing her. Helping her to bring her own chakras into balance. Looking really, she's actually quite quickly starting to heal. It's pretty amazing. She's kind of looking like a deity in a way. She's like a deity that has a like a fruit basket on her head. <laughs> she has like grapes and bananas and peaches. <laughs> like she's wearing like a fruit basket on her head. It's kind of cool. It's like a, a golden plate with lots of fruit that goes up into kind of like a point. But it's it's cool looking. Something very natural about her, like a, a garden deity or something. She has amazing balance, amazing poise. She's really beautiful. She ha She's kind of full-figured. She's um, a very curvy woman. She also has a really great laugh about her. There's something cheerful about her energy. She's starting to come back into herself. She's still not ready to get back to work just yet, but she's definitely reviving. Let me take a look at your third eye. Just see if your third eye is looking like anything different. Third eye has got a stale type of flavor to it. Like, um, like the chip bag was left open and two days later you would like a chip and it's just stale and just not that enjoyable. It's like cereal that's gone stale. Third eye is like gone stale. It looks like a very thin layer of teal color. And you can see through it. It's not vibrant. It's not active. It's very, it's like stretched thin. Your third eye is very exhausted as well. It just, it's like it can't revive itself. It needs CPR. It like needs the heart. It needs, it's got its own, like it had like a, its heart stopped beating. The heart of your third eye stopped beating. It, it, it's got kind of this negative thought process. Like I'm never going to heal. My heart's never going to stop or start up again. And I'm always going to feel this way. It's like on and on. It's kind of like uh, the glasses half empty type mentality um, with your third eye here. It needs something to believe in. It needs something good to believe in. Something that, I mean, can ignite its heart. A dream come true kind of thing. Something beautiful. I tell the third eye that it has such an important purpose. Isn't that purpose enough? Isn't that purpose beautiful enough? That purpose is you. The beautiful purpose is you. Again, it comes back to self-love. That would make sense why the sacral chakra throat and third eye are all sort of interconnected in this self-love challenge. 
because once the third eye realizes its own beautiful purpose is itself self-worth that way it can be reborn your third eye is definitely listening and it's definitely open-minded <laughs> funny to the whole concept It is already feeling better. Let's look at your solar plexus. Mm, it's really orangey in color. It's kind of like a gross tasting, uh, like orange dreamsicle like flavor, but it's like not good. It's like a very disappointing sherbet. It's like, man, I this was not what I was getting. I did not order this. <laughs> That's what it's like. Emotion, sadness. It's like, help me. Is anybody going to help me? Is anybody going to help me? Help me. It's like feeling completely helpless. And not, nothing you can do about it. Can somebody please help me? So you're lo you've lost hope. You can't help yourself. That's the decision. That you can't help yourself. There's a gross, hairy ball in, in the midst of this orange sherbet. And it's a, like, I'm pulling it out. It's, it's a weird, like, uh, weed that grew in here. It's kind of mushroom-like, but in, it has weird, hairy growths on it. Black. It kind of reminds me of this armpit hair that's really, like, dead, like, th thick. course that feels that is really supportive that is really helpful and this still there's solar plexus still has work to do there's still deeper stuff here we're making some amazing progress i mean amazing progress here it's just rotted it's rot underneath the roots of this a strange weed. It's uh, there's a, so a connection with the spine energy as well. Again, working on bringing balance to the the third eye and crown, which is starting to circulate in a much more healthy way. Um, but as that circulates, I gotta take a look at the spine because it's having an effect on the third eye and crown balance as well. I mean, it affects all chakras, but that's the loudest right now. A lot of negative beliefs, which, I mean, with what you're going through, it, it's like, it's kind of like losing hope. It would be very natural. It would be very natural to have some stockpiles of negative beliefs, right? Because it's a hard situation and it feels kind of hopeless. Like, it's just like little orbs or little pockets of negative beliefs. It's, it's very emotional as well. They look like little fish eggs. It's like, um, I mean, it's like feelings like nobody will ever love me. I mean, it's like wanting to be held, wanting to be supported, wanting to be helped. It's not too much to ask. And it feels sad like that. Lonely. Ugh. Just really um, sending the love into all these it's affecting the throat, which is good. There's like a, a some eyes looking through this healing process. And they're just, they're kind of attached. And they're attached to the back of the throat. They're just... I'm, I'm like healing their cover-up. 
I tell the emotional gut, and I just say, just be you. Let the eyes be the eyes. This is just an entity attachment. Um, it doesn't have to be attached anymore because you don't have to be attached to it. So we can just let that go, right? That entity is encouraging you to stay feeling low and hopeless. So for me to turn the energy inside out, then it's uh, changing its purpose. And its purpose is to encourage you to stay low. So if we're letting go of staying low, then this entity has no purpose. So it has to be let go of. Whether you know how to let go of it or not, it's already being let go of because I've changed the energetic truth. Feeling better, okay? Third eye is already um, awakening. You're feeling more awake in the third eye, more awake in the crown. Um, spine is feeling, I mean, there's still work that could be done here, but boy, is it feeling ever better. Um, throat is even kind of opening its own eyes, its own sensations. Let's go check on the sacral chakra. I got to go into root first is what it's, it sounds like. Because root is overcompensating. It's overcompensating itself to support sacral chakra. And it needs to, it needs to be root. Sacral needs to be sacral. Because it's helping to support, it's helping to keep the sacral chakra supported when it's having a hard time supporting itself. <sighs> root is a total, root is its own situation here. It does not, it is like not being used in the best balance. It's like not being used properly. It's really, it's like, uh, oh, it's really shifting a lot of energy in your head, which is good. I'm just, I'm just going to circulate really positive energy in here. I'm going to put some, the element of water in here just to purify the root. Um, it's very tender, very sensitive. It's really jammed, but I'm just circulating this, lightening things up. I'm going to pull the root on down into the earth, okay? So it really, it just emphasizes that we're grounded to the planet. Safe for your soul to be all the way in. Chakras are starting to feel active, starting to talk to each other, starting to work together, starting to feel better. I'm looking at the rot and the energy side of your legs. It's starting to repair itself. It's starting to remember that this isn't the truth. That this rotted flesh isn't the truth. It's weird. It's like weird looking black eels that are just kind of coming out of the calves. And they're just going into the earth. They're just getting out of here because we're changing the energies up. I'm just, I'm literally putting an orb around every single one of those eels. And then I'm just letting them go into the earth, into the core of the earth, so the earth can can support those, the needs of those. It's just, it's not your problem. <laughs> the earth knows what to do with this stuff. <laughs> that feels good. It's giving you access to your feet in a healthy way. It's giving your root room to expand and grow, feel connected to the planet. It's giving your sacral chakra the memories of itself. It's not over, it's not like um, root and sacral are kind of overshadowing each other. So that feels a lot better. Man, you just feel f simply fantastic. Like 10,000 leagues better than when we started. Let's see, uh, I, 
I just want to see how this stress-free you is doing, okay? So this is good. Because I separated you from the stress, right? And the stress was like a, a stress body. It was like its own etheric body. And so I put you in the stress-free room so you could feel safe and start to process a reality that does not include stress. My interpretation was that you would need to eventually face this, but I see the stress body has already disappeared. And you're still healing in the stress-free space. Which is fine, because the more that part of you heals in the stress-free space, the more that you all heal. And it's just slowly, you're just slowly absorbing more and more and more of that stress-free self back. So you're feeling more and more and more like a stress-free self. I don't see any ugliness I'm reflecting. I do still feel like, like we've made some amazing progress. There's still some stuff we could look at. But um, this energy work, I know 60 minutes, it's like for days. Like, so it's going to be processing over days, which is great. And this should help give, like, really alleviate the way you've been feeling. It help you feel a lot better. Thank you so much for this opportunity, this experience. Thank you for sharing. What a cool session. What a cool experience. It was really exciting helping you because there's so much that we can do to help you feel better. So, all right. <laughs> Thank you again. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay. Thank you all and have a beautiful day.